Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Five questions I have for this USC program as they enter into that spring practice window. And this is a program heading into the 2024 offseason where there is a lot of moving parts and a lot of reasons to be excited about this team heading into that 2024 year. Want to get into some of the things that I'll be paying close attention to as spring practice plays out for this USC program. Now, before we get into it, just want to say, as always, thank you to you guys and a massive shout out to the USC fans. I mean, whether we're talking high school recruiting, transfer portal, coaching updates, position deep dives, you guys continue to show a ton of love, a ton of support to the boys. Y'all know I love talking about this program. Can't thank you guys enough for giving me your support. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And more importantly, would love to get some feedback from you, whether you have answers to some of these questions I have for spring practice or questions that you have yourself, throw them in the comment section. We'll chop it up there. And without further ado, let's get into this one. I want to start right off the bat, just saying this depth chart, horrible depth chart, not accurate. This is more just for me to kind of work through what I have going on in my brain. So disregard the depth chart to a large extent. And I want to get into the first thing that I'm looking at. And that is I mean, the quarterback battle that we're going to see take place. Now, Make no mistake about it. I think Miller Moss is quarterback one entering in spring practice. I think he certainly has the inside track at getting that quarterback one spot heading into 2024. But I look at this quarterback room and say, that is exactly how you want a quarterback room to look in an offseason, where you have Miller Moss, who shows you what he could do in that Louisville game, where that was largely the most clean offense we've seen from USC during that 2023 season. We all have a ton of confidence in terms of what Miller Moss can do in this USC offense. He's been in this offense for going into year three of this Lincoln Riley offense. He understands it inside and out. You have your guy that you feel confident in, and you have a guy that gives that quarterback room a really high floor. And then you throw in a guy like Jaden Mayava, who has just the high, high ceiling, right? He's a guy that I don't think we see start in 2024. And if not in 2024, I think you're going to see a really talented quarterback in 2025. This is a kid that we talked about when he transferred from UNLV as big body, phenomenal athlete, very strong arm, a guy that from a physical trait standpoint checks every single box that you want to see in a starting quarterback. That's exactly how you want a quarterback room to look, a guy that gives you that high floor, a guy that you're confident you're going to win football games with in the fall, and then a younger quarterback that has a really high ceiling. It's a quarterback battle. I think we expect Miller Moss to win it, but it's a very healthy quarterback room heading into that 2024 year. Now, the next position group I want to talk about, and the position group that I probably am most excited for, for USC heading into that 2024 year, and that's the defensive line. And why I'm so excited about it, it starts with Eric Henderson coming in. This is a guy that not only is going to be a phenomenal recruiter, but more importantly, a good developer. And that's something that just did not take place for this USC defense over the last couple of years. And I want to focus in on some of the young defensive linemen that I'm going to be scouring the spring practice notes in terms of what do they look like in spring practice. You have Bear Alexander, who we got only going into year three. We know what he is. If he can take a step, you're looking at one of the most dominant defensive linemen in college football. You bring in a guy like Nate Clifton, but as solid as it gets, can play inside, can play outside. You bring in Isaiah Rakes, who we get. I love this guy. Like this is a guy that's not going to stuff the stat sheet, but you talk about that zero tech that's going to eat double teams, allow linebackers to play free. You kind of know what you have with some of those guys, the younger guys. That's what I'm looking for the most. It starts with guys like Braylon Shelby, who again, I follow the USC account. He looks like a workout warrior in the gym and at times shows some really nice things as a true freshman. What does it sound like he's doing in terms of the progression as a defensive lineman. I throw in a guy like Sam Green, again, going into year two from St. Francis Academy, lower center of gravity, really powerful hands, didn't get on the field as much as we expected as a freshman. He's another guy I'm certainly taking a look for going into year two, a guy that I got to give you guys credit for, shouting out Elijah Hughes in the comment section. This is a guy that y'all told me to go back and watch the film. I went back and watched some of the film. A lot to be excited about Elijah Hughes. Now, he played a little undersized as a freshman in 2023. What does it look like for him getting another offseason to work out, put on some weight? I am really – this guy plays hard. Probably played the hardest of any defensive lineman on that USC team. 
really excited for him. And then you have guys like Anthony Lucas, Cam Franklin coming in as a true freshman. This is a young defensive line with a young, ton of young talent. I can't wait to hear what they look like in spring practice and what they look like in the spring game because that's where it starts for this USC team. You want to win the line of scrimmage, especially going into the Big Ten. Those names, we just kind of, what, five, six names that could be potentially very good players for USC, fired up for the young defensive line talent that we could see for USC heading into 2024. Next thing I want to talk about is the revamped secondary. Now, Dan Lynn quickly got to work, brought in a lot of guys from UCLA, including John Humphrey and Kamari Ramsey. I want to talk a little bit about how this secondary could play out and who are getting the first team reps. Now, I think you brought in kind of a, a whole new starting secondary, right? John Humphrey and Carlos Nicholson at that cornerback spot. I go back and watch the film from USC's defense against Louisville. Uh, what Jacoby Covington did, what Prophet Brown did at that cornerback spot, you're really excited about what those guys could be in 2024. And I think at the end of the day, you look at that cornerback spot and say, there is a lot of quality competition in that room. And that's just something that USC didn't have last year. Like if Damani Jackson was not panning out, they didn't have anyone else to go to. Damani Jackson just stayed out there and kind of was burnt toast for a lot of those games. The depth and the quality of competition in that cornerback room as you return guys like Prophet Brown and Jacoby Covington, then inject John Humphrey and the Carlos Nicholson. I mean, that's a lot of competition in that cornerback room. You move to the safety spot, Kamari Ramsey coming in from UCLA, who I think is really special. Dan Lynn brought him over for a reason. I think plays kind of that hybrid, maybe nickel role really, really well. You bring in Achille Arnold, who's just played a ton of football, but you have guys like Anthony Beavers, who also played some really good football against Louisville in that bowl game. I'll go back to that Louisville game and say that USC defense, you could tell it was still a little bit lost, but at the end of the day, they played extremely hard. They played physical and they didn't miss tackles. And that's something that you can't say for that USC team throughout the first 12 games of that season. I suddenly look at this secondary room and say, hey, you got a lot of competition heading into spring practice. Now the question is, all right, who's going to earn those, those number one reps for this USC team? Heading into 2024, next thing I want to talk about, and this is not as much a question, just as much or more just a fun conversation to have as you scroll up and take a look at this offense. How does this wide receiver room shake out heading into 2024? A ton of young talent. And what I'm most excited for is how is this young talent going to get used? And I want to start with arguably the most electric player in college football, Zachariah Branch. And what I'm looking for in Zachariah Branch and what I'm reading the spring practice notes for is how is he getting incorporated in this offense? I think Zachariah Branch is much more than just a gadget player on the offensive side of the football. Now, don't take that as don't give men to rounds in screens. You want to get Zachariah the branch, branch the football as many times as you can throughout a duration of the game. I felt like at times, maybe this was just because he was a true freshman. Lincoln Riley just kind of saw him as a gadget guy. Didn't really ask him to run many routes down the field. He's a guy that you combine the speed with the movement skills, the ability to get in and out of breaks and create separation. I think Zachary Branch, yes, you're going to give him the, the end of rounds. You're going to give him the screens. Let him go cook as a true wide receiver as well. And you sprinkle in the other guys and I the USC fans who've listened for a while, you guys know how fired up I am about this wide receiver room and why I'm so fired up is you got so many different guys that do different things, right? You have Jacoby Lane, who has tremendous ball skill, uses that big frame to go up and get those 50-50 balls. You have Deuce Robinson, who's just kind of the definition of a matchup nightmare. Like you want to stick a safety on him. He is just going out physical and you want to stick a linebacker on him. He's going to run right by him. Deuce Robinson going into year two, really excited about him. Then you have you're just someone comp though. I got to give another shout out. I compared Makai Lemon to Jordan Addison. And someone in the comments said, I would see more of an Amon Ross St. Brown. And I said, I think I completely agree. And so you look at Makai Lemon, what does he do? He's not faster than Zach Ryan Branch. He's not bigger than Jacoby Lane. Makai Lemon just separates. And at the end of the day, football is a separation game. And Makai Lemon in the route tree, in the route nuance that he has, you're looking at a bunch of wide receivers only going into year two. If they have the development that we all expect 
I mean, Miller Moss is going to have a phenomenal pass catching group to, to work with. I'm just excited to hear what do those guys look like in spring practice. Last question I have that I, I really am looking at, and that is the linebacker position. And it's more, I want to start with Mason Cobb. Now they don't have Eric Gentry on this list, which I, I was wild. We'll talk about Eric Gentry. I continue to go back and watch USC in 2023. Mason Cobb was a, a shell of himself from what he was at Oklahoma State in 2022. You bring in Matt Entz, who was a phenomenal get to come in and coach these linebackers. My first question is, is Mason Cobb looking back to what he looked like at Oklahoma State? Because if you get the Mason Cobb that was on Oklahoma State, you're getting an all-conference linebacker. He didn't look anything close to an all-conference linebacker in 2023. I don't know if he was battling injury. I don't know if it was the defensive scheme. I don't know if it was coaching. Whatever it was, what I'm looking for the most, and one of the more important questions that we have for this USC team is, can Mason Cobb get back to the form that we saw at Oklahoma State? And if that's the case, that is going to be massive for this USC team. You asked me what I think were the weakest part of that USC defense was. It was Tack and Curtis and Mason Cobb. Now, the next question is, how is Eric Gentry getting used, right? You bring in Achille Arnold. I have a pretty good idea of what Achille Arnold is going to be. I am a huge fan of him. He plays with a hot motor, flies around the football field. My bigger question is Eric Gentry, where you get a guy that has a kind of just a unique skill set, a linebacker that we haven't really seen before. How is he going to get used? I look back at the film for Eric Gentry in 2023. This was a guy that could rush the passer at an extremely high level. They didn't use him as a pass rusher. I wonder on some of those third and longs, is Eric Gentry getting some work as an edge rusher? Is Eric Gentry getting worked as a pass rusher? That's something that I think Dan Lim, we know, gets creative with how he uses his personnel on defense. Eric Gentry is that guy that I'm looking for and say, how are we planning on using him on the defensive side of the football? The sport of college football is about taking athletes and putting them in spots where they can utilize their skill set. Eric Gentry's skill set did not get utilized effectively in 2023. Can we get him utilized effectively in 2024? That's the last question that I have. Offensive line, I actually am pretty confident about this offensive line. You have some guys like Elijah Page, Alani Noah. I'll be monitoring what they look like in spring practice. I think they're going to be damn good. We'll continue to cover some of these storylines as spring practice kicks off and roll us through. Appreciate you guys, as always, for rocking with the boys again. It's always a blast talking this team. Can't thank you guys enough for the support. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.